Uh, let's, get, let's get back to, we call it my take, it's an editorial and I do it at the top of the hour. Mark Thiessen joins us now, American Enterprise Institute scholar. All right, Mark, welcome to the program, good to see you. Good to see you, Stuart. I'm saying that the Democrats are stuck at this moment with old guard leadership, which is desperately trying to defend what amounts to policy failure. Am I going too far? No, you're not. You're 100% correct. And look, you showed that picture of all the Democrats standing there next to a sign that says, Make America Sick Again. That's, that's not exactly a brilliant communication strategy. Uh, they're the ones who made America sick again with Obamacare. And the reality is what Americans are sick of today is obstruction in Washington. There's a reason why. They just gave the presidency, the House, and the Senate to the Republican Party because they want unified government. They want change. They don't want this, uh, the, the, the obstruction and, and, uh, and divided government that we've had for these years. So I I, I, you know, I think the Democrats and Chuck Schumer are making a terrible mistake in, in staking their ground on obstruction. They're going to obstruct uh, any changes to Obamacare. They're going to obstruct uh, Trump's uh, nominees for cabinet positions. They're going to obstruct the city. He's even threatening to obstruct the next Supreme Court justice. He doesn't even know who it is. At least the Republicans waited until they appointed Merrick Garland before they said they were going to stop him. Uh, he, uh, Trump hasn't even named his, his Supreme Court nominee and already Chuck Schumer is threatening this. So I think if they become the party of obstruction, uh, they're, going, they're not going to be learning the lesson of 2016. So why are they... Well, what's the position of President Obama here? Because after he leaves office, I believe he lives in Washington, D.C., I don't think he's mm -hmm. going away. I think he wants to, to be the leader of the Democrat Party. What do you say? I think you're right. I think, look, I think uh, Barack Obama was the worst president since Jimmy Carter, and he's getting ready to be the worst former president since Jimmy Carter. I mean, one of the things, you know, he, Obama always talks about the, the positive example that George W. Bush set in terms of the transition, about reaching out and helping the transition despite their policy differences. The other thing that he should have learned from George W. Bush was when you leave office, leave. Uh, you know, you don't hear George W. Bush going in and opining or interfering with Barack Obama's presidency for the last eight years, and it's not the role of Barack Obama now to become the leader of the of the loyal opposition in Washington to Donald Trump. Uh, Trump is just elected. The American people wanted change, and it's time for the for 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 Democrats to yeah. start trying to reach out and work with Republicans as opposed to obstructing them. You know, Mark, I, I see you as a very political person. I mean, politics is is your uh, that's what you eat for breakfast every day. I know that. <laughs> but so I'm going to ask you an sure. economic question. There's some confusion, okay. and it's coming to us from the Federal Reserve. <laughs> You know, there are a bunch of economists, and they say, on the one hand, we're not quite sure what Trump's going to do for the economy. On the other hand, it looks like tax cuts will stimulate the economy. What do you think about mm -hmm. economic growth in the future? You've got a point of view on this? I do. I think we're going to have a lot of economic growth because I think you had a lot of pent-up policies that Republicans uh, have been trying to put forward, and even where there's bipartisan support, like for tax reform, uh, that have been pent up because uh, of obstruction from Barack Obama and from the Democrats in Washington. Uh, and now I think you have a chance to have real tax reform that's going to bring, you know, billions if not trillions of dollars of money offshore back into the United States. I think you're, uh, you know, the, and, and it's going to be paired in a bipartisan way with infrastructure reform, which is essentially Barack Obama's policy was spending hundreds of, hundred, hundreds of billions of dollars on infrastructure and uh, Trump supports it. So I think there's an opportunity for there to be some bipartisan support uh, for economic stimulus policies that will have some elements of the Democratic agenda, a lot of elements of Republican agenda that will simplify the tax code and get the economy growing again. So I think there's lots of reason for optimism. You, say, you think Trump's off to a good start? I think he is. I think he's picked one of the most conservative cabinets uh, in, in, of any president in American history. You know, I mean, when you look at the possible possibilities for growth now, he's also said that he wants to impose tariffs on China and, and on Mexico. If we start getting into trade wars, that's going to that's going to harm economic growth. There's some things that could happen. Also, sure. and if Obamacare, if we don't come to some sort of a a uh, if we do this repeal and, and delay as opposed to repeal and replace, Obamacare could fall apart, and it would be the Repu it would be Republic as he that's pointed true. out in that tweet. We got to be careful that the Republicans. Could get blamed for it. Uh, so there's a lot of peril, but there's also a lot of opportunity looking forward. 